Good morning, Borada. I'm joined today by my colleague, Suta Keller Jenkins. Um, Uta, can you say a few words about who you are? Yeah, yes, of course. Um, well, I came to the UK in 1992 as an Erasmus student and little did I know that in a few years later I would then be looking after British Erasmus students going abroad, not just to Germany, but uh, to the entire world. I've been working in the department, as I said, since the early 90s, teaching uh, at all levels, but uh, for the best part of the last 15 years I've been looking after the year abroad, initially for German, uh, but in the last two years I've also taken on the uh, role as chair of the study abroad committee and in that role I also sort of look after all the students uh, in, in COA, but particularly in the modern languages departments, uh, going to different uh, destinations, in, mainly in Europe, but not exclusively in Europe. Super. Of course, the reason that we're talking today is just to give a little bit of insight into the year abroad that our students of modern languages undertake. Um, can you say a bit about the three options that are available to students? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, um, that's actually quite exciting uh, for the different types of students we have. So, uh, for example, one of, a very, one of the po very popular options is to go teaching as a British Council language assistant. So um, our students may have had a similar um, uh, experience when they went to school and they, they might have had a teaching assistant from France, from Italy, from Spain, from Germany, uh, teaching their res respective mother tongues to British students. Now, what we offer uh, to our students, to our British students here, that they can do the same going out to a primary or secondary schools in Europe and teach English as a foreign language. It's not teaching the language, by the way, it's also really representing um, Great Britain, or I should better say the United Kingdom and, and the, the, the culture of this, of, of this country, um, which, is, which is just very, very good, particularly for those of our students who already know that they may want to become teachers uh, after graduating. Um, for those who are not quite sure, I think it's also a very good option of finding out whether teaching might be something for them. I mean, over the course of the years, we've, I suppose I've had examples of both, where some students came back and said, oh, I really like the experience, it's been very, very valuable, but um, actually, I don't think I will. Uh, joined the teaching professions, but uh, but others came back and said, no, this year has really totally shown to me that um, I want to become a teacher. So I think that's really, really a fantastic opportunity. Um, another option that we give our students is to study abroad at one of our many um, European partner institutions. Um, and we've had uh, contacts with them for years and years, so we tend to know them really well. We talk very, very closely with those universities. We know most of the colleagues there already, and they've been really looking after our students very, very well. Um, studying abroad means that you're able not only to continue your, your language tuition, so you will be able to join um, uh, language courses, uh, so Italian as a foreign language, German as a foreign language and so on. But in addition to that, of course, our students are also given the opportunity to uh, carry on with um, uh, cultural modules so they can learn about history, they can learn about politics in a particular country, they can do uh, international relations. So whatever they study here, they can use, usually very usefully complement with similar modules at our host universities, but they will then be taught obviously through their L2, so through the other language, which is very, very exciting and will definitely add to their, um, to, to their curricula, uh, to their CVs. Yeah. Um, and the third option that we offer are work placements. Now here I have to say um, that we will support any student wishing to do a work placement. And in the past we had students working say in, um, in trans translation agencies. Uh, we had one student who worked for, for Porsche. Uh, he was in the customer services department organizing all those wonderful cars 
uh, for the um, VIP customers in, in Germany. But of course, um, it is very important that you sort of bring to this experience the correct profile. And it would mean that you'd have to have a very high level in your L2 already, and maybe also a little bit of other experience that would make you attractive to these employers. But what we as Swansea University staff do, we will certainly help you with every step in the, um, in the application process. So that means uh, writing a CV, writing a covering letter, maybe train you for any interview that, that, will be, that you will be holding and so forth. Um, it may also be worth at this stage uh, mentioning that it's possible for most degree schemes to, um, to maybe split the year and also start, say, in, uh, with, with, with a semester at a university and then in the second semester maybe complement that with work experience. That has the advantage of being eased into a sort of more in a more gentle way because the university environment tends to be a little bit more accommodating um, but then you know really move on from that and use everything all the knowledge and all the language you've learned in a, in a proper working environment. That's super, that's fantastic. Um, what are the transferable skills or what are the skills the students gain from undertaking a year abroad? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, at a year abroad, anyone who does that, that will provide uh, these students with, a, I will call it a unique selling point with a USP, because not all that many students in, in the United Kingdom will have this opportunity. So, I mean, first of all, of course, it's a, it's a personal um, development experience. Students will go out there, they will have to sort of be resilient, we will help them with accommodation, but also some of them, they will prefer to find their own. So they will really have to be quite, um, um, how can I say, enterprising and maybe go move out of their comfort zone to achieve certain things. But this is exactly what, what equips them with the skills when they come back and they say, well, the world is my oyster, is my oyster now, I, I can do this, I've got this t-shirt. Um, so they will learn in a personal capacity and um, they will obviously really improve their language skills and mostly uh, it's mainly the, um, the spoken skills. They will come back and they will pick up all the kinds of oh, hmm, expressions, the language that they wouldn't be taught in the classroom. Uh, they will pick up, um, they, they, they will have a sort of how can I put this? They, they will be able to, to differentiate different, um, different accents maybe. And it, I always find it's wonderful when they come back and I can hear a little bit of Bavarian possibly, or very, very high German, you say, say if they've gone up to the, to the north. And I think this is also something that adds to their language learning experience. And academically, I will say they will learn a lot because they will also be given the opportunity to pick up um, other modules that are, well, I would say connected to their program of study here in Swansea, but prog um, modules that might also complement what they do here. So, for example, I had one student and she was doing a joint honours in um, history and German. She went to Mannheim University and picked up a marketing module. Um, where she was learning the basics of, of marketing. And that, I'm pretty sure, gave her a head start when she was then applying to uh, a master's module, um, a, a master's course after she graduated from Swansea. And I'm pleased to say that she's now in the fast track, um, uh, or what you call it, oh, give me a prompt, Greg, fast track uh, civil servant. Right. Okay. Um, program and she's she's really made her career there. But I will say that the year abroad and also the module choice that she had there really gave her a head start there because it made her as a uh, as a student of history and German with marketing knowledge. It made her simply stand out amazingly. So all of that is possible, and the year abroad gives you that opportunity to add on something that you traditionally might not have done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would say personally, academically and linguistically, students will come back and they really are 
changed people when they come back. It's, it's noticeable every year and it's, it's a joy of our profession to be able to notice that incredible um, development our students go through during their year abroad. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, obviously a lot of our students come to us doing two languages, so French and German or German and Spanish, Italian and German, whatever the case may be. In that instance, what do you recommend that they do in terms of, should they split their year? Should they choose one language? Um, well, okay, yeah, that depends. And we will look at each student case on an individual basis. Now, let's say if a student um, comes with one language, say with, say with French, and they pick up Spanish, up in Itzio. So they start Spanish from, from scratch. My advice would be to then spend the whole year abroad in Spain, simply because there's a lot more to catch up on uh, in terms of grammar, but particularly vocabulary. And I think that really takes time. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean, so say if the student then goes to Spain for the entire year, that he or she would have to neglect their, their French. Uh, at our Spanish partners, they also offer, in most cases, uh, French courses that our students can also um, um, sign up for and, and complete. Or our students will also meet, say, Spanish exchange students that they can convert, um, sorry, uh, French exchange students that they can converse with and therefore so that they can still keep up the other language whilst building up their first language to a very high degree, mm -hmm. or very high level. Now, <clears throat> those students who say come to us with two um, A-levels, with two languages where they have uh, A-level uh, degree, then I would, I would, mm, I would probably say mm, it's possible to split a year. It's not necessarily what I would recommend because the feedback I've been getting over years and years is that it takes a little while to get used to the year abroad experience or maybe you know two three months and then you really start enjoying it because you you know where you are you you you're familiar with the environment and you can really start exploring in, in a different way um, and this is where they really start enjoying it um, but we are not restricting ours or our students to, to do this. If students feel, no, they really want to split the year and they want to, to go to, uh, to two countries, this is some, something we fully support and we would also ensure that there aren't any overlaps between the two semesters. So um, we, would, we would support that, of course, as well. Um, my, as I say, my personal, um, my personal advice would be probably go for one country, enjoy that to the full, and maybe uh, seek out all opportunities that then that host university offers in order to keep up with the other language. But we, we are flexible, we are flexible here in Swansea, yeah. And of course there's time as well on each side of the year abroad in the summer holiday during summer vacation, students to travel to other yeah. countries to expend, extend their time. Um, yeah. Absolutely, and we, we had students who just liked, uh, well, they, they wanted to extend the time they spend abroad for as long as possible, and uh, once they finish their, their work placements or once, once they finish their, uh, their semesters, they would then go on and, and find themselves maybe a student job or something in the host country that would still allow them to spend a little bit more time there um, yeah, to do that, or um, in German, for example, bef uh, prior to going out to the year abroad, we also uh, we, we, um, support students applying for a DRRD scholarship, DRRD, that's the German Academic Exchange Service. Right. And they every year uh, invite students to apply for uh, scholarships that would um, finance or help finance maybe a three or a four week um, language course before going abroad. And not only that, uh, a lot of our host universities, 
They also offer their core pre-sessional language courses. So these are language courses that our students can join at a very reasonable fee before starting the actual academic term. And this is also something that's been taken up by our students, uh, in, um, by, by most of them actually, and we've had really good feedback yeah. about this, this opportunity. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, one final question. And this is one is perhaps more for parents rather than prospective applicants. Um, what safety nets are there? What support is in place for students who are heading abroad? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really glad that you're asking this question um, because um, being a parent myself and uh, having gone through the year abroad experience as a parent with, with my son who went to Germany uh, two years ago, uh, I know exactly how important this is for, for any mother or father. Um, now, there are several levels of support. Um, every student has um, a year abroad or study abroad coordinator that will support them in any aspects of the stay abroad. So that is somebody like me, but there's an equivalent obviously in, in the French section, in Italian section, in Spanish and so on. Uh, so we will be uh, supporting students with any questions they have regarding to their program of study at, at the, the host university or, um, you know, with, with any uh, issue they may have um, at the workplace. And I'm, I'm saying issue, but also we, we always are really happy to hear about any really positive feedback and what they've, what they've been doing. Um, in addition to that, the students also have uh, an ac academic mentor. This is somebody they have throughout their university time at Swansea and the acad uh, academic mentor is also there for them during the year abroad. So there's no question about that. Um, so these are the academic departments, but outside there, I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, Swansea University has a fantastic team. Uh, in the International Office and the International Development Office, and that's our Go Global team. We've got wonderful colleagues who are incredibly supportive to help, sort, uh, to help students sort out the whole administrative uh, side of things, all the documentation that has to be completed uh, in order to make the year abroad possible. And we work incredibly closely with our colleagues from the Go Global team as well, and any uh, issue, any problem that is flagged up, uh, we, we, we solve together. And I have to say that this kind of teamwork over the years has been very, very positive, very constructive. Um, at our hosts, uh, the host universities, there is an equivalent. There are international offices. And because most of our exchange programs with our host universities have been in place for so long, in, in many cases for, for decades, Again, we, we know most of the colleagues working there. And again, if there's any, any, any problem of anything of that nature, they will alert us to, to, to it or the other way, even before students go out, if we know that there are special needs require, um, that need to be met, whatever, then we will inform our hosts uh, prior, even before students go out. So there are um, different levels. Uh, both here in Swansea, but also with our hosts. Uh, so there are um, people who can help uh, sort out any problems that will occur. And maybe um, one final thing I'd like to mention here in Swansea, uh, we also offer uh, to students participation in, a, um, in, inter, in an intercultural workshop. So we, we invite students, that's a, that's a half a day workshop, where we will talk about what it's like to go abroad, um, maybe for the first time. I mean, we, we've got quite a few students who may not have been to any of the countries whose languages they're studying. Many of them have not been abroad full stop. And we also got a lot of home students, so students who are from Wales and maybe are commuting to Swansea University, so they have not had the experience of moving away from home. And of course, we're very aware that it's then quite something to be sent abroad. Um, but there again, um, a lot of what they will expect, uh, you can 
discussed before. So, you know, that there might be an element of, of homesickness or a culture shock when they first of all, I don't know, meet the Germans and having to cope with their abrupt way of um, communication. But really what we, we tell them right before they go, we say, well, no, the Germans aren't impolite or abrupt. It's just a different way of communicating. And it's just quite normal that we, we call a spade a spade, as it were. And, um, you know, that you, you mustn't think, oh, this is an, an impolite nation. But, you know, so that whilst we're here, whilst our students are still here, we help them to understand what will come their way once, once they go abroad. And also um, in terms of uh, student societies, um, we've got language societies and all these language societies also organize, uh, it's called a language cafe. So this is where we bring together um, our exchange students from our various uh, partner universities and they will meet our language learners in a very uh, informal environment once a week where they learn language informally. And this is also then forging links uh, with between uh, well those students from partner universities and our students who will go there next year or uh, whenever. Um, so they may already know somebody yeah. uh, before even going out. So there again, there are various ways in which we can prepare our students quite um, quite easily, and hopefully, you know, very effectively for the year abroad experience. That's fantastic. Very, very comprehensive there. Um, I think we can probably end it there. So thank you, Uta, for your wisdom and your knowledge of the year abroad process. Um, and if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to get in touch with us directly. Absolutely. Yes. So, yes. Okay. okay. Super. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.